Hello everyone, Patrick from Studio 300 here. Today we're taking a look at the Rodecaster Pro. Over the past year, Rode has added several updates to the Rodecaster Pro to increase its features and abilities. I'm going to show you three of the most important updates, in my opinion, that they've added to the Rodecaster Pro since first releasing it. The first update I want to show you is the Advanced Audio Effects Editing Mode. Each of the main four channels on the Rodecaster Pro has audio effects that you could always add. You can access these by going to the channel, clicking on audio processing, and you see a variety of different effects that you can apply to your channel to hopefully make it sound better and more professional. These include the compressor, the high pass filter, the de-esser, noise gate, the oral exciter, and the big bottom, as well as the button to enable or turn off all the processing. When enabled, these apply a default setting to your audio, but they may not always apply the best settings for the audio being recorded. To give you more control over this, Rode has added the effects edit mode. To access this mode, first go to the main settings menu, click on advanced audio processing, and then Enable Effects Edit Mode. Now go back to the channel. Go back to Audio Processing. And now you see each of those audio processors has their own button. When we go into the High Pass Filter, you can see I can now change the frequency that it's rolling off the low frequencies. As I bring this up, we're going to hear less and less low end to my voice and I can bring it back down and find that sweet spot where it's rolling off all the noise underneath my voice. We can do the same with the noise gate. We get control of parameters like the threshold, how loud the noise has to get before the noise gate opens up, as well as the speed at which the gate applies, how long it holds open, how long it takes to release, and the range that it decreases when I'm not talking. We also get control of my de -esser. I can change the threshold, the ratio, the attack, and the release, as well as any gain it's added and what frequency it's basing the main part of the de -esser, where it's kind of focusing the de -esser. The compressor can help control the dynamics of my vocal, and we get control of the usual uh, settings, threshold, ratio, attack, release, and gain, as well as control of the Aphex Oral Exciter and the Big Bottom. If you don't know how to use any of these processors, check out some videos online or ask your studio staff member to help show you how they work before you start changing the parameters, as this can drastically affect the overall quality of your sound. However, feel free to experiment if you like, and if you need to restore the default settings, Go back to the main menu, go to advanced, information, and activate the factory reset. The effects edit mode also gives you access to the master compressor on the main output of the Rodecaster. You'll find this under channels, master compressor. You'll probably want to leave this one alone again as changing it can severely impact the overall quality of your mix. Next, we're going to look at the two ways you can record multi-track with your Rodecaster Pro. The first is on the device itself, and the second is connecting it to a computer and recording into a DAW. To have the Rodecaster record multi-track to the SD card in the Rodecaster, go to Settings, Advanced, audio, multi-track, and select micro SD card. This will record each track separately to the SD card to be further edited and mixed in a DAW at a later time. To record a multi-track session straight to a DAW on a computer, make sure multi-track is enabled for USB. We're going to open DAW here. In this case, we're gonna use Logic Pro. 
and when it opens, we're going to select for our input device, Rodecaster Pro Multi-Channel instead of Stereo. Since we're listening to our audio also out of our Rodecaster, we will also set the output device to the Rodecaster Pro. If it changes it back to stereo, make sure you select multi-channel again before continuing. Let's start by adding one channel and set it to input three. For the multi-track recording, input three is actually channel one. So I'm going to go ahead and label that channel one. And then we're also going to record the stereo mix because the stereo mix is actually inputs one and two. So we'll create another channel, set it to input one and two, record enable both. And now when we record, we're recording my track separately as well as the stereo mix. If I wanted to record additional audio here, I could add the other channels. Channel two is on input four, channel three, input five, channel 4, input 6, as well as the USB smartphone and Bluetooth audio on additional channels. The last feature I want to show you is using the Rodecaster Pro as a MIDI controller. To do this, you'll need to go into the Rodecaster settings, go to Advanced, Audio, Operations, and make sure that MIDI control is enabled. Once you've done that, you'll want to scroll down on this website and find the PDF on how to sync the controller with your preferred DAW. In this case, either Logic Pro or Reaper. I've gone ahead and synced it. And now the faders on the Roadcaster allow me to move up to eight of the faders on my channel strip here in Logic Pro. If I wanted to, I could switch these read settings to write so that it captures these movements and records them as it's happening. Now when I play, these movements will get recorded and these will be saved. MIDI control also allows you to switch scenes and or cameras in the streaming software, but we'll go over that another day. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new. And we look forward to seeing you in the studio to use the Roadcaster Pro. Thank you.